So, so good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Um, I see that we we have a lot of participants from different parts of the world. I welcome you all to the session. So last year we had um, a session on sanitation workers looking at um, the research done by World Bank SNV and Watraid and also a very interactive session where we got the opinion of several participants on um, research work, knowledge and SOPs. And we decided to continue the session um, this year uh, due to uh, a heightened uh, importance of this topic. And we really welcome you to this session. I request everyone apart from the presenters to switch off your videos um, and mute your mics uh, in order to have a smooth session. Um, thank you all. Uh, so without further ado, let's um, have this um, session today morning. Um, the session is going to run for 90 minutes and we have some very important speakers here. And um, after the speakers have given their presentations, we would have a very detailed panel discussion. So for the panel discussion, I request all the participants to uh, write down your questions in the chat uh, and it would be addressed one by one. So without further ado, let's um, start with uh, our presentations. And first we have uh, Kanika Singh, who's representing the entire consortium of the Sanitation Workers Initiative. And uh, she will be talking about uh, global advocacy in uh, the health, safety and dignity of sanitation workers, um, along with the entire consortium, uh, which is uh, the International Labor Organization, World Trade, World Bank, World Health Organization and SNV. So over to you, Kanika. Thank Just you, very Sita. quick. Um, my team scratched, so I'm just sharing the presentation the screen, so you just please say next. Sure. Um, hello all, uh, I'm Kanika and I work with uh, WaterAid. Uh, as Shobhna had mentioned, I'll be sharing some key updates from an ongoing collaborative initiative for global advocacy on the health, safety and dignity of sanitation workers. Uh, so uh, next slide, please. Uh, just to give a brief background of this initiative, uh, in 2019, ILO, WaterAid, uh, WHO and World Bank uh, joined hands for an assessment on uh, health, safety and dignity of sanitation workers. And this assessment involved interviews, uh, secondary review and case study documentation. Uh, and it was the first of its kind assessment done uh, on this subject uh, at a global level. Uh, it helped identifying several challenges faced by sanitation workers, including those of lack of legal protection, occupational health and safety, financial insecurity and social stigma and discrimination. Uh, it has also helped uh, in unpacking some uh, good practices being implemented in different parts of the world. And the assessment also gives us uh, some uh, key areas of action. Uh, and I can share the report of this assessment, uh, the link of it after I complete my presentation. Next slide, please. So based on the learnings and areas of action uh, emerging from this assessment, uh, we have now embarked upon a new phase uh, of a global advocacy project, which is a collaborative partnership between ILO, WaterAid, World Bank, WHO and SNV. And we also have some additional support from BMGF. Uh, the project is focusing on three major outcomes. Uh, the first is political prioritization. So we are aiming that sanitation workers rights will be included uh, in the agendas of governments as well as civil society organizations at various levels. The second outcome here is influencing the wash and labor sectors and mainstreaming uh, sanitation workers issues and their rights in the initiatives of both of these sectors. And the third outcome is on addressing knowledge gaps. Uh, so 
we uh, we are undertaking some research initiatives and we'll be coming out with some knowledge products which will help address the key knowledge gaps on the subject and in turn will help in improving the situation of sanitation workers in the long run next please Uh, so for each of these uh, outcomes, we have some uh, activities or initiatives, and this table here is listing all the 14 initiatives being implemented under the project. Uh, uh, in the interest of time, in today's presentation, I'll be sharing uh, just the key up, uh, updates of some of the ongoing activities. Next slide, please. Uh, so starting with the ILO, ILO. Is there, uh, I mean, I can hear some echo. Uh, yeah, is the sound better now? Yes, yes Kanishka, please go ahead. Okay, okay sure. Uh, thanks. So uh, this ILO South Asia meeting on sanitation workers will be organized as a tripartite meeting of governments, workers and employers in the South Asia region. And uh, basically the idea here is to facilitate discussions focusing on the major risks faced by sanitation workers and key challenges of governments in addressing these risks, as well as the key knowledge gaps on the subject. Uh, we will also be discussing uh, the actions which governments and social partners have undertaken so far to address some of these risks and challenges. And finally, we will also uh, discuss the strategies uh, which ILO and other social partners can undertake in the future to address these challenges. And as the outcome, we plan to develop a regional or a country level roadmap for each of these three constituencies based on the discussions. Next, please. Uh, we are also working on supporting sanitation workers, organizations and networks in their initiatives to mobilize workers, to build the workers movements and to engage with local or national authorities and decision makers. So uh, very, uh, we are just about to conclude a consultation process with some of the uh, sanitation workers, representatives and networks. And based on this consultation, we are exploring some uh, strategies for this uh, initiative, such as uh, enabling uh, platforms and cases for sanitation workers to engage with authorities and also providing uh, micro grant support to some selected organizations and networks. Next, please. So this activity uh, aims at developing a research agenda on sanitation workers. So uh, we hope that once we develop this uh, set of pri research priorities, this will help the policy makers and other key stakeholders and decision makers to prioritize uh, areas of research which really require much more attention and more evidence generation. So very recently we have concluded a review of the existing knowledge on this subject and based on that we are uh, we have identified the major knowledge gaps on sanitation workers issues and uh, through a consultative process we are also now uh, starting to work on preparation of a research agenda and once this is uh, finalized we will uh, disseminate it uh, and publish it in journals and on online forums next please Uh, so this activity is linked to the previous one. Uh, it aims at incentivizing and supporting applied research on sanitation workers. And uh, this year's uh, at this year's uh, UNC Water and Health Conference, we will be supporting research awards on sanitation workers uh, for the best abstracts and best papers. And very recently, we have also announced research support grants. Uh, to institutions and to masters and PhD students who are undertaking research on sanitation workers as part of their thesis work. And in this initiative, our aim is to encourage research uh, which is done in collaboration with sanitation workers or their representatives. Next, please. Uh, we are also conducting a review of existing procedures, guidelines, uh, 
and regulations on sanitation workers. And uh, on completing this review, we will consolidate it in the form of best practices, checklists, and case studies, uh, which can be used by governments to adapt and implement in their own contexts. And it can also be helpful for workers' organizations to use in their advocacy initiatives and for demanding their rights. And finally, uh, we hope that it will also be useful for donors and development partners uh, to integrate the issues of sanitation workers in their urban sanitation initiatives. Next, please. Similarly, we are also conducting a review of existing technological innovations and experiences which aim at protecting health, safety and dignity of sanitation workers. And our focus here is to uh, uh, look at how these uh, innovations are human centric or how these are worker centric rather than just focusing on the technology aspects. And uh, based on this review, we will identify good practices and emerging technologies and also the gaps in the innovation. Next, please. And uh, finally, we are also working on uh, developing an online platform focusing on sanitation workers, and this will uh, be launched as a separate domain on the Susanna website. Uh, towards the end of today's session, Shobhna will be uh, sharing some more updates on this, and it will feature a repository of uh, resources on sanitation workers and forum posts, events, blogs, etc. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, this opportunity. And uh, in case you have any questions or any comments, I'm happy to get back. Thank you. Over to you, Shubhna. Uh, thank you, Kanika, for this very insightful presentation. I think research is definitely key in the sanitation workers topic to understand uh, what we need to do. What are the knowledge gaps that are existing? to improve the health, sanitation, um, health, safety, and dignity of sanitation workers. Um, for qu uh, if you have questions, um, uh, please post them on the chat. We will address them in the panel discussion after all the presentations. Um, next, we have uh, Mr. Mati Vatanen from the uh, Orissa government in India uh, who would actually present the Garima initiative with sanitation workers from India. So over to you, sir. Um, Finn, I, uh, I, sir, I are you play the video? Yes. Um, Link. There are many such and unsung heroes without whom our cities cannot function. These heroes work tirelessly, day and night, come rain. Festivals and holidays, and putting their lives at risk. Yet they have faced centuries of discrimination, occupational stigma, loss of health and life, and invisibility within the system. These workers don't have access to safe and comfortable personal protective devices. Though this work should be considered admirable and these workers should be celebrated. But the reality is starkly opposite. The Honorable Chief Minister of Orissa, Sri Naveen Patnaik, decided to put an end to this generational injustice. He says, the government of Odisha has always been committed towards its underprivileged citizens and our conscience can never be calmed. If centuries of prayer, today we are launching the scheme Garima to guarantee the safety and dignity of core sanitation workers and provide protective and welfare measures for them and their families. Garima brings safety and dignity to sanitation workers in Orissa and aims at making a zero accident and fatality free state for core sanitation workers. All core sanitation workers will be identified through a rigorous enumeration and registration process. Core sanitation workers who deal with human fecal matter face huge risk due to unsafe working conditions, causing injuries and sometimes death when they clean septic tanks or sewer lines. Though these workers provide essential and critical service, 
they face huge social stigma no dignity in the work don't have access to safe and comfortable personal protective devices and so many other disadvantages in fact not any human but go against our conscience we just to sit right the intestines exist for ages the team garima regulates and institutionalizes core sanitation services and ensures mandatory provision of personal protective equipment and safety devices includes compensation for accident or injury epf esi family pension and disability support it also introduces a special wage category for sanitation workers risk and hardship allowance provides health and life insurance free education for children up to post graduation and provides 90% subsidies for housing and two wheelers an initial corpus fund of rupees 50 crore has been created to implement garim The scheme envisages the creation of a state commission for core sanitation workers. Through this historic and revolutionary initiative, Odisha sets a pioneering example in India to bring lasting happiness to one lakh core sanitation workers. your mic is off is it visible yes sir could you please go to the presentation mode yeah 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 perfect though there are several acts and legal provisions in the bill prohibit manual scavenging actually in reality if you see there is hardly any safety and protection for the sanitation workers even now they continue to die inside the septic tanks and sewer systems while cleaning very power is actually an outcome of our decision to be truthful to our conscience Uh, sir your mic is muted could you please switch on your yeah oh, i'm going sorry yes we're able to hear you now is it is is it is it visible now is it's all yes. visible yes. visible yes it's visible yeah ah so there are there are several legal provisions acts to prohibit manual scavenging in the country but in reality if you see there is hardly any safety or protection for the sanitation workers they continue to die inside the septic tanks and the sewer uh, systems while cleaning gariba our scheme is actually an outcome of our decision to be truthful to our conscience not to continue in the denial mode acknowledge the 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 ground reality of existence of the inhuman practice of human being of sleep in human fecal matter causing generations of injustice then we came up with this in the in odia language local language garima means dignity that shows the uh, spirit of the scheme we launched on 11th of september 2020 hardly one month one, one year ago though this sanitation work covered wide spectrum of activities there is an echo somewhere but we have limited the scope of applic- applicability of this scheme to five major uh, activities desludging of the septic tanks cleaning of the sewer systems cleaning of open drains maintenance of the sewage treatment plant septic plant public and community toilets the activities taken up under these five broad categories 
perform the core sanitation work and the core sanitation workers and their families are covered under this act and the uh, the scheme provides for various benefits like ensuring a, a decent wages introducing risk and hardship allowance providing health support health insurance schemes and the family support providing house uh, uh, financial assistance for building house two wheeler support mobile phone support edu higher edu free higher education support up for the children several uh, benefits are intended or components of this scheme and the uh, progress we have made in implementing this scheme from september onwards that the, the first of all we have notified all the committees at the state district as well as at the state at the city level all 114 cities the committees have been notified put in place and we have also started the enumeration process we have developed a, a application software enumeration application software which is mobile enabled and uh, we have started the enumeration process the we have roped in safai karamchari andolan which is the main uh, stakeholder stakeholder they represent the uh, safai karamcharis they have been uh, taken as the enumerators and they have been oriented on the uh, enumeration process we have taken up six major cities in the first phase to uh, do the enumeration and uh, uh, we have completed the enumeration process validation also fairly is completed and we are now ready to issue the id cards to the core sanitation worker in six cities you will find about 12970 uh, 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 workers have been identified as the core sanitation workers and uh, the we have also set up the uh, the emergency response sanitation unit in all the 114 cities notified and set up that and we have also uh, notified the uh, the responsible sanitation authority in each of these 114 cities they are the statutory authorities notified authorities to monitor and regulate the sewer entry manual cleaning as well as to enforce the relevant laws so next is the personal protective equipment safety gears we are aware that generally the, the sanitation workers don't wear the uh, safety devices the, the safety gears and all we we say that it's due to lack of awareness they are very casual about it but the reality is that these personal protective equipments are can't be actually they are not wearable the reality is that they are not wearable they are not because they are not comfortable probably they are designed uh, for somebody else thinking that it's not meant for me not for meant for us it for somebody else maybe the cost due to cost consideration uh, they are all uh, made of cheap materials we never know but but the reality is that they don't use it because they don't feel comfortable so we focused on that we decided that we have to have the uh, the personal protective devices gears uh, so that they are able to wear it so what we did is that we did the uh, uh, sampling we took five members from for each of these categories of the core sanitation works and we provided various options of the personal protective devices and equipments and they were asked they were trained to use it they were asked to use it for 15 days after that we uh, took their feedback we understood what, what what was comfortable for them what was not comfortable for them how they felt what should be the uh, improvement how it can be made better they were taking into account the comfort the material the maintenance the fitting for each person the ergonomy factors and the sustained use of those uh, devices so we took their feedback and then we also organized a round table consult consultation with the the pp manufacturers the designers and the safety experts we shared the experiences of our core sanitation workers while using the available uh, safety devices and then we requested them to make some the uh, appropriate modifications and give us and then we finalized the personal protective gear including the gloves shoes everything with the appropriate garima branding also and we have sir, we have distributed for our core sanitation workers and next is the procurement of the safety devices and the equipments to prevent entry of manual entry into the sewer lines for cleaning we have procured in our divisions and we have also organized intensive training program for the core sanitation workers as well as the supervisors and uh, officials uh, managing the system you will find the photographs 
we have also recently uh, uh, started an, uh, a special purpose vehicle called odisha water academy to provide capacity building and training for the uh, functionaries operators and workers uh, dealing with the drinking water and wastewater management it has been floated by vatco it is a government uh, uh, promoted entity and it has signed a, a, a partnership arrangement with the wash institute and the, as a partner and the importing training program we have we have already done the training of trainers master training sir master trainers have been trained and certificates issued you will find the photographs of the uh, on this on the job field training demo being taken up we have also come up with the safety manual and uh, training manuals you will see how to carry the uh, injured person in case of emergencies they are doing they are demonstrating then for the sewer safe sewer entry professionals also we have conducted the classroom training as well as the field training this is the uh, uh, training provided for the uh, sewer professionals for the confined space and how to do the mechanized cleaning of the sewer lines the next is the uh, this is our next initiative which is called garima hall this this is constructed in the sections of the PHO Vatco, where the poor sanitation workers would be when they are required to come for the duty, they come here, keep their uh, two wheeler parked here. This is the space. This is the uh, this is the house meant for them in the this in the within the office premises, and they will keep their they can uh, change their dresses, switch on to the uh, uh, uniform, put on their safety devices. personal protective gears keep their dresses in the locker and uh, they can go for the work come back from the work have their wash here take care they can take bath they can rest here more the, these are air conditioned space provided for them they can wash their clothes uniforms also here keep it in their locker room separate facilities are made available for uh, male and female this has been created in all the sections and so far about 28 such garima halls have been created and next very this is another very important uh, interventions we have made you are aware that the the, the in fact it's, it was a, it was a shocking and surprising for us when we wanted when we when we looked into the 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 wages of the poor sanitation workers we understood that that the the formal notification the statutory notification which the labor department brings out from time to time fixing the minimum wages for various categories of workers uh, reveal that the sanitation work has not been categorized into any of the categories existing classifications neither unskilled semi skilled skilled or high skilled it does not find a mention in the uh, the notification at all so this has been taken up by the committee with the labor department and then we got the Uh, the core sanitation work uh, divided into two categories highly skilled and skill and then we got the notification the and we got the minimum wages notified for the core sanitation work earlier in the absence of uh, uh, the, the notification they were categorized as unskilled worker now they are categorized as the skilled worker and highly skilled the sewer entry as well as the septic tank uh, workers they are categorized as highly skilled that has uh, resulted in an increase of about 49% of their wage, daily wages and for the uh, gray for the for the gray to it is the 33% uh, increase and the earlier the unskilled worker was getting about they were getting as the unskilled worker they were getting about 311 rupees now the sewer entry professional or the septic tank cleaner will get about 461 rupees that's the quantum jump uh, we could uh, make and another important intervention which we made is the introducing a, uh, an allowance called rest and hardship allowance so this has been recently notified and uh, 15% of the wages has been uh, year has, be, has been notified as the rest and hardship allowance for the grade 1 uh, category of core sanitation workers who take up the septic tank and the sewer line cleaning work apart from that uh, the state also has notified a new health scheme called biju swasthya kalyan yojana wherein every uh, urban poor family has been covered with 5 lakh rupees 
per annum health cover. It's a health assurance scheme. It's a cashless scheme where the uh, government health facilities and private empaneled hospitals are uh, uh, covered under the scheme. And for the women members, the ceiling is up to rupees seven lakh per annum. All our core, all our core sanitation workers would be provided under this, would be covered under this scheme. And we have also set up a, a robust monitoring mechanism at the state level, at the district level, and the ULB level. And now we are focusing on uh, the expanding the uh, implementation activities and to provide the benefits to the workers and their families. Thank you so much. And there ends the presentation. Uh, thank you, sir, for um, giving us some insights on what the local government in uh, Orissa is doing. I think this is uh, really key to formalizing the sector, and uh, we hope that more government initiatives like this pan out uh, all across the world uh, to protect the safety um, and dignity of sanitation workers. Um, now we move on from India to Africa where APASA, the Pan-African um, Sanitation, um, Pan-African Association for Sanitation Actors is uh, transforming the sanitation chain or, or sanitation access uh, by empowering the private sector. And we have the Vice President of PASA, Eva Muhia, to um, talk about what they are doing currently. So over to you, Eva. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good day, everybody. My name is Eva from Kenya. Um, as I wait for the presentation to be turned on, I can bring an introduction of who PASA is and how the formation of PASA was done. PASA was formulated in the year 2017 when some of the sectors came together and attended a meeting in Ankau, that is the water minister's meeting that was held in Bamako in Morocco. And uh, the six of them were presenting the challenges that the private sector is facing in sanitation to the water ministers in of Africa. And uh, out of the six countries that were represented by the six private sector uh, 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 facilitators who were there, there was a rebirth of uh, Pan-Africa sanitation actors. And at that particular time, they were looking at transportation as the main one. But then later, it, it turned out that uh, they would be looking at the entire value chain. So in 2019, we attended the uh, FSM-5. And in FSM-5, now we were 19 countries who had come together from the private sector. And we had presentation in the FSM-5. We did our elections, and we had an election where our president sits in the, the front home country, it's Senegal, we Ibraso, and I deputize him and from representing the Anglophones. And we have, an, we have other members of the secretariat from other countries. So I don't know whether my presentation is on, because I could start on the presentation. Yeah, uh, the state of, uh, of, of our sanitation is uh, interesting from where we sit as a private sector, because we find ourselves in a business that uh, probably by default or by design that we are in this industry. So next we can continue. So it, I think when we got into this as business people, we were not familiar with what we call the sanitation value chain. And it is in the learning of different intervals and different meetings that we've, we've been having is when we realized that there's something we call a sanitation value chain and interlinking the sustainable development goals. So uh, the role of PASA, the Pan-Africa Pan Pan Sanitation Actors, is to coordinate and to bring the realization of the private sector working in sanitation to identify them and to introduce them to the entire value chain and what is uh, there in the value chain is like we are turning entrepreneurs to social entrepreneurs their entity to understand the kind the work they are doing and the role they are playing in the in the in the community is not just about uh, 
uh, doing a business and making profit, but it is also impacting a social responsibility into the communities and even into the environment next. So I just want the next, the next, um, the next, uh, you can just, you can put it completely, the whole of it, so that I just explained to it, yeah. So um, in Africa, because uh, Pan African Sanity Center is mainly membership of, of the African countries, we find that most of the sewers that are connected to the access of the community is at like what was designed, uh, like in Nairobi, what was designed to represent 750,000 people in population is now taking a capacity of uh, 3 million, which is about five times or 10 times of the quantity that was supposed to take care of. So we find that the rest of the, 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 the rest of the fecal sludge or the rest of the treatment that is not being taken care by the CEO companies, it is taken care by the private sectors. That is through the septic tank, the construction of it, the emptying of it, the pit for clean, the construction of the pit latrines, and the, the, the treatment of the pit latrines, the emptying of the pit latrines, uh, the use of the treatment, the entire construction, all the way to the sewer plumbing. So, um, Looking at these figures and looking at where Africa is projected to be, it is estimated that the urbanist population in Africa by 2050 will be 50%. And growing urban population in Africa cities is giving rise to the informal settlements that in some nations house up to 60% of the population. That you find in Africa, like in Nairobi, like 60% the informal settlement and in the informal settlement with this kind of growth and we don't have very uh, accurate and very interlinked uh, sewer systems into the into into the communities we are likely to end up in a crisis so what is the role of PASA what is the role of the private sector into all this it's for them to be incorporated in the conversations that are being held and that are going to be held within the community within the, the discussions that are happening right now so the next slide Um, so how can a, how can private sector actors play, and what role are they and can they play in this sector? We already have a significant portion in the market. Like I said, if uh, if we are, we are looking at a sewer line like in Kenya having 17 percent connected to sewer line in the entire country and 50% uh, in the urban setup like Nairobi, then it means the private sector is already playing a big role in what is not connected into the sewer system. So we have a significant portion into the market, but yet we do not understand the policies, we do not understand. Um, we have valuable data and insight in the sector that is not coordinated and it's not collected. So it would, uh, we, we as PASA are bringing this voice out. Who is looking at the data that we hold? Who is, uh, who is responsible of this data? Is there a platform that we can share this information? of data and at country levels we are asking those questions to to the responsible people in government and even organizations that are in research that are interested in collecting data how do they reach us are we coordinated enough to reach us so that is the form the formulation of PASA is bringing the actors together from the private sector bringing the human resource from the private sector together to show yeah here we are and this is the information that we have and I think with this data given back to the necessary res res uh, responsible platform, it can be able to influence policies and decision making and prioritize sanitation. Uh, we have a significant portion of private sanitation actors as organized group and caucuses and organization in different countries. So what we have done is like we, we have first have gone ahead to identify what, what, uh, what groupings are there in the manual MTS, and how can we bring them together to become a voice within PASA? Uh, who, what caucuses are there 
how can we bring them to, how can we make PASA a platform where they can come and share the information they have or challenges that they are facing and we can be able to put them across to the global world for the sustainable development 6.2 to be achieved. Next. So what we have done has PASA, just give me the whole slide. What we've done has PASA is to have a deep conversation between government and private sector, to have better interaction between the certification value chain. It's interesting, I don't know whether this happens in Asia, but in Kenya, in Africa, it's very interesting that uh, like the private sector in sanitation, I'll, I mean, most countries, there was that feel like they're enemies to the government, and yet both of them need each other. So what we've done is, uh, has uh, passed and at country levels, we've been able to start having conversation between government and private sector and planning and making them understand that probably where we sit, we do not even understand some of the policies and regulations that are there. So how can we be put into the conversations and having this planning and, and when you're planning policy formulations, what do you have to hear from us? What can we inform to, to, to government? What can we inform to the bodies that need this information? What are the challenges that we are facing? Where are we fighting? Because most of the time, it's probably the interpretation of law or or it's we do not understand each other. So as PASA, we've been able to bring together at country level these common discussions of like, can we sit down together? We are already a formulated body. We have a representation in Africa trickling down to country level. So can we have this, this, this um, information? I mean, can these discussions together? And our entry point usually it's about data and even advocacy. Uh, we, where we show that we have this information that you do not have and how can we give it to you unless we are seated together. So what we have done is just uh, come together and trying to bring the legislation enforcing uh, service provision, innovation and self-regulations uh, kind of idea into the, into the platform and into the table and said here we are. If, we, if you have this information from us, uh, how can it be connected back to the policy? How can it inform policy? What are the gaps that are there? How can this inform your monitoring and evaluation uh, in projects and what is happening in the sanitation? How can it inform? So this discussion based on being brought by a platform that we call Pan-Africa Pan Sanitation Actors has bared a lot of good fruits in, in, in the member countries that are represented in PASA. Uh, next slide. So one of the biggest um, achievements that we've had in the, the few years that we've been in existence is the, in the building capacity to members. And uh, where we have uh, had linked the members to what they do to the sustainable development goals, uh, for them to understand what role are there and what role are you playing? How do you recognize and how do you even pay attention or, or prioritize the needs of a sanitation worker who is working within a certain organization? So we, we this discussion that we've been having with organizations and even with government uh, is asking the government to, uh, who we've asked the government to encourage us by incentives, whereby like for an example, uh, if we we have this like almost mandatory training. So if you've been if you've gone through certain trainings, and if you're a member of PASA, you, it is linked to the tender systems. Like uh, you link you, you link uh, you, it's a it's a credential that if you're a member of PASA, you can be able to get this government tender. So it, it gives it more weight to us that you to for you to become a member of uh, of of, uh, of of this organized association. And also, it also helps government to train because if you if you are going to if you are going to 
have uh, government recognition? Are there any guidelines? Are there any trainings that are helping and that are assisting? And who is coming out with this uh, syllabus of these trainings? Are we are we are we having an engagement together to, for you to understand where it is that we are coming from? So in most of the countries, what we've done is linked ourselves with government and come up with and research centers and academias to come up with guidelines and syllabuses that can be able to form small and um, um, like short-term trainings or three-day or one-day training for, 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 a, for an MTA, for a manual MTA or for someone dealing in, in sanitation. So, and when you get that certificate, it gives you a, it gives you a mileage to be able to be considered in an interview, to be able to be considered into uh, a tender tendering system. So improving is existing structures to match population volume. So there are so many uh, uh, decentralized system, on-site sewers, technologies that are happening that they're in the world. Some of them, the government is probably not aware because they, their focus is not in that area. But coming from private sector, where I sit, I am interested to know what is Senegal doing? How are they able to come up with the on-site sewer? And sharing this information also with government is helping the government build up guidelines or Standards of if you have decentralized system, how can we be able to reach out to this man, to reach out to this population that is not connected into the sewer? So that information has found us or get, having good rapport and good uh, uh, relationship with uh, authorities that are relevant in sanitation in, in different countries. And then, of course, the recognition of the small and medium enterprises, because when we talk about private sector, private sector is a is, is a large word. It's a big word. It's a small word also, word also, because if we do not map out private sector in sanitation in the entire value chain, we will find ourselves leaving the the small the small the small and medium enterprises out, because we will be talking about sanitation private sector. So if you call for a meeting, like now we are here, we are in a platform of uh, Susanna Forum, and, and then we are talking about sanitation and you invited the private sector. So if you invited a manufacturer of sanitation uh, galvanized pipes to sit in a meeting like this and to talk about on behalf of the private sector, probably what they would be talking about, they would not be able to understand about the safe, the health, safety and dignity of a sanitation worker. So if we are able to map out the small scale and the medium enterprise in the entire value chain, it would be very important. And that is what PASA has done, is to identify in the entire value chain who are the small scale, who are the medium enterprise, so that we enable, we are sure and we are certain that we are not leaving anyone behind. Next slide. So like I said, um, the private sector in sanitation is instituting frameworks to enable government and private sector to better coordinate their roles so at achieving sustainable development goals. And this is exactly what we are doing, talking to local authorities, national government, for us also oversight bodies, looking at the labor laws in, 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 in Africa, in represented countries. Do they, do they touch on a sanitation worker? Is it defined or is it a general term uh, um, like a worker? So does, does, does the labor law fit in that sanitation worker? And these are the discussions that we're having. And so far we've had very good discussions. And in, in uh, we have had uh, two general meetings because the one we had in uh, South Africa, then we had one in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, then we had one online uh, this year for, for members. And this is one of the trainings that we were going through. How do you link how are you? How are we linking our business to the sustainable development goals? In what representation are they in the sustainable development goal? And when you show them, and when you show members, and you show ourselves that this is how we are linked to what the discussions that are going on into the into into the global arena and platform in sanitation, then we feel identified with what is happening globally. So that has also bared a lot of fruits because I think most of our members were not aware that. Uh, Okay, there's, yes, there's clean water and sanitation, but what they didn't have the knowledge of where the world is going towards the projection of the sustainable development goals and actually what was sustainable development goals and how we are interlinked to that as a private sector. Next slide. Um, so 
we, we believe that you can use private sector sanitation workers and it is to form standard and guidelines of operation and sanitation industries. We've been in different forums, which has been very, very interesting, where you're in a meeting and the panel are discussing about private sector in sanitation. I've been in several forums like that. And I sit and I'm watching and there is no representation of, of, of the private sector in that panel. So someone is talking on behalf of the, of the private sector. Sometimes maybe they have no in, they, they're not aware where they can get a private sector to talk. So the, it's based on research and it's based on the papers that I've heard or a study someone was doing and they're making comments. And a question comes across about um, the health, safety and dignity. And how the person responds to the question, I, well, from where I sit, I say, that's not true, that's not it. They don't have that information. On the ground, it's something totally different. So it's like we could use this platform for PASA, and we have been using the platform for PASA to, to give information. This is our challenges that we are doing. Um, the, the two presenters who presented, they have talked about this in a, in a different way. Like, for instance, the designs of uh, the, protect, the protective gear, is it designed in mind of a sanitation worker or was it just a glove that was, was made and so there's a glove in the market and you give it to the sanitation worker, but the sanitation worker will tell you that the problem is not that I don't want to wear the glove, it is the material inside, it is too hot and oh, it, it's too uncomfortable. So can it be designed in a way that there is comfort within the work that I am doing? Or the, 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 the overall that I'm wearing, it's too hot if I use it like this. Can it be designed to fit in the sanitation worker? And if we get this information from the the sanitation workers themselves. I, I think we can be able now to to open up even an innovative market of where they, they specifically the, pro, the producers and the manufacturers are looking at the sanitation workers and their needs. I will give an example of manual MTS, something that has happened in many countries from member countries. We have we have had this response from our members, whereby an organization comes, their intentions are very good, they have this new technology, they want to turn uh, a manual MTS to semi-mechanized MTS. But when they were designing the, the equipment, they were not involved. So when they give the manual empty the equipment to use, they face great challenges because they probably did not, are not aware that there's a lot of solid sanitary parts in, inside the, the pit toilet. So with the, the equipment that we have brought, we cannot be able to suck out the fecal sludge inside the pit toilet because of the polythene. But supposing there was a shredder are connected to it and that it can be able to shred and now suck it out. Those are the information that we can be able to give and, and, and that can be able to help in standard operating procedures. They can be able to inform uh, what guidelines should be set and how are they set. It, they can be able to the, the, the feedback can be able to help us monitor the private sector operations through ideas and even color coding. And how do we connect all these into the Internet of Things? Because remember, uh, with the COVID, uh, one of the one of the, the advantages, besides the many disadvantages that COVID-19 has brought on board, is is, is the use of technology, the Internet of Things, the interconnection and the networks. So with this information, how do we bring all this into the platform of the Internet of Things for the private sector to be able to draw from and even for them to be able to uh, create technical support from the uh, in IT people or IT personalities or, in, or people who are in good at that, incorporating the sanitation workers into it. So it's only the feedback that can come from the people themselves. So PASA, we, we, we look, we are focused in looking at what challenges are there, even in connecting to the technologies that are there within ourselves. When you are coming up with this technology, did you involve the, 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 the people who are going to use it at every stage for them to understand, and for you to understand what exactly it is they are, they are looking for? Next slide. So um, you can give me the whole slide. What does the future hold for? 
how can a person mobilize the sanitation value chain to actualize fair access equity for sanitation infrastructure? It's just like what I said, involve us into this conversation. We are here and we can be able to give the DT details that are needed for this conversation to move into the next level and for the sustainable development goals to be achieved. Uh, what innovations can we steer? Can we steer within the sanitation industry to realize sustainability and wider social impact with reference to the SDGs? The innovations that are coming, we should look at it holistically and long term. We are living in a generation whereby if you're not careful when it comes to issues of sanitation, you might not be able to have mentors that we will pass over and who will be able to take care of what is happening in the environment and in wastewater. And uh, with this, we want to connect the technologies that are there even to the Internet of Things so that the young people are encouraged and are, are looking at it. They also want to be part of this conversation that we are having. How can we unlock value within the industry in order to create opportunities for existing and incoming sanitation actors and professionals? Like I have said, we are looking at the platform holistically. We are looking at the young people. What new ideas are there? The beauty about the generation we are having now, I, I call it in a positive way, a lazy generation. But that lazy generation has a way, a quicker way of making things happen. So if we tell them this is the problem that we are having, I visited an informal settlement in Kenya called Kibra. It's, our, it's the biggest one in Kenya. And I was amazed by the young people and the ideas they have on how we can fit empty the pit toilet using some interesting technologies that are connected to their phone. So these are things that we are looking forward to, but uh, by different organizations coming together and encouraging the private sector and encouraging PASA as a platform to be able to draw this information from, we can, we will be, will help us be able to draw more of those uh, uh, attentions, more of those uh, technologies, ideas that are there in the platform. So we are looking at a situation whereby in the future uh, PASA is a one platform uh, uh, center where you can draw any information you want from the private sector without controlling the private sector, allowing them to be, because one of the things about private sector is when you put them together, independence is what they believe in. So they bring in the ideas, the ideologies, they bring them the technology, the innovations, they feel protected within, within it and they are able now to bring something out and they feel they are part of this entire conversation. So, um, I, there, is there another slide? Yes, that is, uh, thank you very much. And uh, uh, any information you'd want on the private sector, on sanitation actors and the entire value chain, would be glad to give any information to any organization that would be interested. Thank you very much. My name is Eva again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eva, for beautifully explaining the role of um, role and importance of private sector and how small and medium sized enterprises are uh, indispensable to achieve SDG 6.2. Um, I hope that um, other uh, international organizations and uh, government workers in who are participating in this um, session today will um, will connect with PASA in some way to see how um, they can empower the private sector and formalize um, sanitation work. So now, um, oh, um, so, sorry, sir. Okay. Um, I think we can go ahead and uh, start the panel discussion. If uh, participants have any questions, please post them on the chat. Um, and um, apart from the presenters, we are joined by Carlos, uh, Kerry and Crespo from the International Labour Organization as well um, as a panelist. Um, hello, Carlos. Um, and I think my first question would be to Kanika. Um, could you share more information about uh, the consultative process um, for the research agenda exercise that you've mentioned in the project, and uh, also how is the initiative taking into consideration 
the voices, uh, opinions, uh, and issues of uh, such a wide range of uh, stakeholders involved. Uh, thanks, Shobna. Um, so basically, uh, as part of our uh, global advocacy project, we have constituted an advisory committee, uh, uh, which comprises of 26 members coming from different uh, diverse backgrounds and also diverse uh, geographies. So uh, the group uh, uh, has people uh, uh, who are sanitation workers, representatives, uh, people working on labor and human rights, WASH practitioners, researchers, academics, and policymakers. Uh, in fact, two of the other presenters, uh, Mr. Mati and Ms. Eva, are also part of this advisory group. So uh, the group meets every six months to share some uh, overall broad strategic inputs uh, for the initiatives. And for some of the specific initiatives, we uh, uh, reach out to uh, members having uh, that uh, related expertise or interest in uh, those particular activities to also seek their inputs and integrate those into our project. And now uh, coming uh, to the uh, question on research agenda. So uh, we are uh, actually doing this in two stages. So uh, right now we are uh, just uh, starting uh, the first round of consultation with a, a group of uh, experts who have been working on this issue. So uh, we, we are reaching out to them uh, for their inputs uh, in setting the research priorities and also in defining the criteria which will be involved in evaluating all these uh, research uh, priorities. And as the second stage of the consultation, we will uh, uh, reach out to uh, a larger group which will uh, uh, have like more people, more other external people, and we will uh, take their inputs in shortlisting the research priorities and uh, ranking them. So, yeah, thank you. Thanks, Kanika. Um, could you uh, let us know how this uh, larger group would be involved or if someone is inter interested in contributing, how can they reach this initiative? Uh, yeah, so uh, if someone is uh, interested, they can write to me. I'll, I'll leave my email ID and I can connect them with the WHO colleagues who are leading this activity. Thanks, Kanika. Uh, my next question is to Mati Vatanan. Um, um, thank you, sir, again for presenting such um, an impressive program. So based on your uh, experience with Karima, um, could you let us know how one can build ownership and accountability among um, the city or town authorities, uh, especially small towns, um, for supporting sanitation workers? See, the, the uh, small cities will have the uh, constraints of resources, human resources as well as the financial resources. The state may have to support them. And it would be, it would be appropriate, it would be... Uh, 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 no, uh, it would be better if the state devises the uh, interventions and set out the process procedures, the standard operating procedures, and then make the cities to implement it, guide them and uh, get it implemented. That's what we are doing. See, we also have about 114 cities, out of which 61 uh, urban local bodies are very small. They are called notified area uh, committees so uh, they're very small so there the uh, the resources constraints would be there they may not be able to understand the larger picture so continuous capacity building training and understanding their requirements and providing hand holding support to set up those uh, institutional arrangements monitoring mechanisms and 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 provide continuous support to make sure that so they implement all the interventions properly Okay, thank you. And um, how do you think that um, this is actually helping how public view the sanitation workers, the program, and uh, how is it changing their um, their view on sanitation workers and um, their dignity? How is it uh, making them respectable professionals? It would take longer time for the public to recognize and realize it we can't expect so soon but the government has to government and the city administration has to do take proactive steps to create that kind of awareness to to disseminate the 
the statutory provisions about the do's and don'ts, the penal provisions. See, when it comes to sewer lines, sewer system cleaning, it is the government or the uh, the city administration which which is the authority or which is the guardian or the property owner. But when it comes to individual septic tank, it is the individuals, it is the public. Every household has a septic tank. So the septic tank cleaning, the cesspool operation, then the household person becomes the uh, authority or the owner. It becomes a private arrangement between the house owner and the sanitation worker. Normally, it doesn't come under the purview of the city. But somebody can get into the septic tank and then die in that septic tank while cleaning. The state will come into the picture. The city government will come into the picture. It's a very dangerous situation. So the, in, the, 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 the responsibility of the city has to you know, cover all by creating that kind of awareness. Because everyone has a septic tank. Every, every, every septic tank can become a potential death trap for the sanitation worker. Next, death can, can happen in any septic tank, in anybody's house. So how the government, how the city uh, administration can regulate it, how they can monitor it, how we can exercise watch and ward. So it's a very, very uh, challenging uh, situation. Extensive awareness building and exemplary actions have to uh, go hand in hand, both. So they have to be, the, the, peop, the public should understand that they are also responsible to ensure safety of the sanitation worker because it happens in their premises. They are also responsible. They, it can't be left to the sanitation worker. So before entering into the septic tank, the house owner should ensure that they, they, they are wearing appropriate personal protective gear, the safety devices. The gas level inside the septic tank is measured and it is below the danger level. So all these things are to be ensured because the government cannot ensure that with each and every household level. It becomes a public responsibility, society responsibility. So that kind of awareness creation has to happen, which is not there presently. So it's, Thank a, very you, sir. it's a very challenging situation. Yes, I, um, uh, most of the deaths that have been reported are also due to lack of negligence from the public. Um, it, it's not, a, not, not only at household levels, but uh, also big corporate companies unfortunately hire sanitation workers in a very informal way and do not, um, which has led to many deaths um, in countries like India. Um, so thank you for um, 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 reiterating that public uh, also plays an important role. Now, uh, over to Carlos um, about um, the labor perspective. So what do you think are the main constraints that need to be keenly looked into to improve the condition of like working condition of sanitation workers? Is there any um, reg regulation uh, on board and what needs to be done to ensure that sanitation workers are safe? Yes, the, thank you. The main challenge, I would say, is the lack of voice of the sanitation workers. Um, in order for them to be able to express that voice, they need to be organized. But contrary to, to what people may think, we, the ILO, would not want governments or even uh, civil society to be the ones organizing these workers. They should um, have their own voice, their own organizations. They should um, then be able to use that voice for um, requesting or demanding the appropriate personal protective equipment, access to social protection, to health care, general um, formalization uh, mechanisms. In terms of that, the ILO, as, as you know, or, or you may know, is the only UN agency that is not only composed of governments. It is 25% uh, of all the votes are owned by the workers' organizations, the trade unions, 
and 25% by employers' organizations. So the private sector, it has a voice from the very beginning. In that um, sense, they have together joined to adopt a number of conventions that protect the rights of workers in general, not only formal workers, but also informal workers. And uh, one of them is the Freedom of Association Convention. There is a, rec a, a recommendation that was adopted in 2015 on the transition from the informal to the formal economy and others that protect workers against forced labor, protect children, and we even have the only international convention that protects the rights of indigenous peoples. In the case of uh, sanitation workers, we have a big intersectionality in which sanitation workers are not only uh, workers, but very often they are minority um, groups. They are women, they are um, immigrants, or other types of workers that on their own have also disadvantages when accessing social protection schemes, formal, uh, formal work, and other types of um, working conditions that benefit more formal workers. So the ILO does have um, uh, many instruments that protect these kind of workers as well. So this is something that's, that's worth looking at, and I would say that the main challenges are recognition, formalization, and organization of workers. So these workers very often are not even seen as workers. They're invisible huh? and they're left behind. So we need to look at the good practices that we have been listening to today and discuss them with the sanitation workers so the sanitation workers can speak for their for themselves and um, help adopt the good practices that they think are necessary for their own particular situation thank you thanks a lot carlos um and you had mentioned that um organizations uh, or organization of sanitation workers is uh, key and one of the main challenges. So let's um, hear from uh, Eva about uh, PASA as an organization. What uh, kind of, um, uh, what advice would you give to organizations or government uh, who are looking to partner or collaborate with um, uh, private sector actors and uh, associations like PASA. Okay, uh, thank you again. It's like this kind of panels that we are we are recognized and that we are known that we exist. And uh, I must say, like in PASA, we have what we call best practices buckets, where we we have defined in the entire sanitation value chain who is there as a sanitation worker, who is there basically mainly in the private sector. And even those that are not even in the private sector, we encourage them but to come and vote because like those who work for government, they're already in the union. But there are some that like um, the Mr. Crelan, Crespo said, they, they're not there, they, their voices are not heard. Uh, so if you come on board to PASA, and now that you know that PASA exists and that we have these best practice pockets for sanitation workers, it is to involve us, it is to put us in this converse, global conversation because we have a lot of information that we are able to give. We have what we, that's why we call it best practices pockets, that we know these ideas that can work, they have been used, but nobody seems to be identifying them. So we don't reinvent the wheel by starting to look on formation, how do we form, how do we regulate? And we already have these ideas of how the self-regulatory can come about. So it is us coming into the same platform. It is us having strengthened sector coordination in conversations like what we are having today. So uh, to me, we, it, every, 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 everything that starts 
starts with one step. And so far, we've taken quite a bit of many steps. And I like what um, Clavin, I hope I spelled his name right, what he said, that we do not, we are looking into a situation whereby we are not going to be, be represented and we are here. It is not the civil society who is talking on our behalf, because the civil society will be talking from one side of the story. But if we are put into this conversation and we already are registered uh, an association, which we are looking in, May, in years to come, that it's going to be a global movement where we will discuss not just the challenges that we are facing, but also the innovation and the ideas, and we will be part of informing policy. And also probably that involvement of private sector is going to scale up the conversation of sanitation and even sanitation work. Thanks, thanks, Eva. Um, so I will go back to Carlos um, about um, the ILO meeting in South Asia. So Arna, I see your hands raised. Uh, is that a particular? Just, just mentioning that there's a question in the chat. Maybe you have yes, planned yes. to look at that. And yes. I'm really excited about the discussion. And But I think the question, either Andres formulates it himself, but I think it could be great to be answered by as well India and, and, and Africa, how is it really working? And it answers to the request from ILO. How can actually the workers organize themselves and how can that be paid for? And how then throughout the year can they do some work? So just wanted so to make Carlos, that. before you leave, could, would you be able to answer the question about how do you think uh, such associations can organize themselves and what exactly happened in the ILO meeting, for example, in South Asia, which Kanika mentioned? I'm sorry, I was muted. Yes, uh, the, the meeting is going to be a capacity building workshop, uh, including um, representatives from six South Asian countries, including Afghanistan. Let's hope that the situation allows it. Uh, Maldives, Sri Lanka, India, Nepal, and Pakistan. Um, we expect to have the participation of employers, workers, and governments in which they will um, discuss the situation in their respective countries. Um, as we understand it, many of these do not really know in depth how the other countries deal with the situation. So we expect to have a good exchange of practices and, uh, and some kind of um, roadmap for each country and also for, for the region. Um, the challenge is, of course, Again, the voice, you know, the, the representation of the informal sanitation workers. And this is something that we need to discuss with the unions, because as I said before, the, the unions and the employer organizations are going to be involved in the organization of the event from the beginning. We're talking about 11 to 13 October, meaning that we should have ready uh, the messages for um, the World Toilet Day activities. The World Toilet Day is every year on 19 November. This year it is going to be about valuing toilets. So th it is a very appropriate thing. So uh, normally workers have their organizations based on their common interests. Basically, basically they form communities of interests and they communicate with each other and then they decide to take some kind of action to advance these interests. So the challenge is to create an enabling environment for those organizations to flourish, for that collective voice to be listened to. So instead of trying to organize the workers ourselves, the point is to create uh, places where their voice is going to be heard. And then um, through workers' representatives, organizations, cooperatives, different forms of, of um, collective voice, then they can express themselves and decide what are their priorities 
and what are the forms of organization that they themselves prefer to have. The, the, our experience is that when they have the opportunity to speak, they will speak. And the, the role of, of um, governments and of uh, the private sector and the civil society organizations is to create that space where they can be heard. Um, so that's to, in a nutshell, that's um, what I would respond to the question. Thank you. So thank you, Carlos, and thank you for joining us today. Um, yeah, so in the interest of time, I just have two more questions. One to Eva again, um, uh, the one posted on chat about how PASA operates and uh, uh, could you please explain if you have a secretariat or who is the contact point or is is it just um, uh, um, private sector contributing their time uh, to be a part of uh, PASA and do you re receive any support externally? Uh, Eva, you're on mute. Could you please unmute yourself? Thank oh, you. Sorry. Yes. And like I said, PASA was the formulation of a group of private sector, like business uh, men. There was no women, a woman that time, but now we have many women. And uh, they met in Bamako. But thereafter, we've had uh, great support from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, who are in support of uh, back support on what it is that we are doing. We've had technical support from COST. We've had uh, support from AFWA, we have had support from AMCAO, and uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's registered uh, association, uh, Pan-African, it's in Africa, and uh, in Ivory Coast, that is where our head office is. Then trickling down to country level. So how do we trickle down to country level? I'll give an example like Kenya. It's a group of different people in the sanitation actors who come together in Kenya and become members of this association. And now adapting and uh, talking to government to have a, a, a strengthened sector coordination that the, our voice can be able to be heard. And now that country, Kenya, now becomes a member for the Pan-Africa Sanitation Act as in representation of a country. But it is, uh, for the countries, we are now 21 countries members. And those that are not, if it was not for COVID, we were going to reach, uh, we, we had a target from our plan, from our strategic plan, we had a target of reaching at least 37 countries by the end of, this, of, of last year. And we would go to introduce ourselves through Af through Afwa, uh, introduce ourselves because Afwa is already a formulated body in in Africa dealing with water service providers in different countries, and uh, now bring on board the sanitation worker. So any member country is welcome in Africa. But we are also looking. We we had a meeting in um, Sri Lanka, and uh, we have. We had members from uh, Bangladesh, and we were now starting to look at a global uh, a global arena where we can now have the African, the Asian now come together and reform a, glo a global uh, association. But uh, you, anyone, any country is welcome to form if you know of any grouping in any country that is just organized and they're not members of PASA, we reach out to them and we, we, we have this support that we've been getting that has been able to help us move on to, to have member countries of other countries, those that have not joined to come in on board and join. Uh, thank you, Eva. I, um, there are a lot of questions on how to reach PASA. So could you please um, um, put a contact on chat on how you could be reached um, mm -hmm. so that other um, African countries who would like to join PASA would be able to reach, to reach out? Um, and I think uh, in the interest of time, I have one last question to uh, Mati Vatanen. Um, about uh, the current situation. We know that South Asian countries are also battling the deadly Delta variant um, uh, during the COVID pandemic. So um, so what exactly um, is, is the Garima initiative doing in terms of uh, measures um, in the pandemic context? Are, are there any special provisions for sanitation workers? Uh, I see that uh, um, uh, Mr. Madhivadnan is not 
available anymore, Kanika? Would you be able to answer that question on uh, what's going on with respect to COVID and pandemic measures for sanitation workers in India? Oh, I, I see that he's there. Yeah, what is it, madam? I, I didn't get it. Um, sorry, um, it's about in what are there any specific uh, pandemic measures that you are uh, taking um, with respect to sanitation workers and uh, um, how is it affecting their work and what uh, are you doing to combat it? So the well, sanitation workers are considered as the frontline warriors. So irrespective of the fact that whether they are from the government regular establishment or outsourced or contractual, irrespective of the uh, uh, you know, uh, so engagement status, they all are protected by the government's uh, insurance scheme. So whatever uh, uh, protection and insurance coverage is provided for the healthcare workers and doctors, the same thing was uh, extended to the sanitation workers also by the Odisha government. Then all sanitation workers were covered with the uh, you know uh, distribution of personal protective equipments, these the, all these things uh, uh, to protect themselves while discharging their work. And uh, during the vaccination also, when the vaccination was administered, the 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 sanitation workers were given priority as the frontline workers, and they all have been covered. So, and and uh, all necessary measures are being taken to protect them in this pandemic, and they have been they have been with the government uh, in in this in this war, right from you know January 2020. Thank you, thank you, sir. Um, I think with this, I would like to thank all the panelists and the presenters. And uh, now we could go ahead and answer a few questions on Wissembly. Um, so, Finn, could you please share? Um, so I'm going to post the, the link on the chat. I think you have to still put the Visembly link into the chat. Yes. So there has been a small mistake. So there's there's the link to um, the chat uh, on the chat to assembly. So if you go to the app, you'd be able to answer the question using the password Susana 2021. And you'd be able to answer the questions. So we'd like to know what operational health safety instruments are you aware of? The password is not working for me. I don't know if others are facing the same. Yeah, for me as well. Um, 
it is capital S small U capital S small A small N capital A. And thirty one. And thirty one. Finn. Yeah. Okay. It, it's not Susana two thousand twenty one. Sorry, it's Susana thirty one. Ah, uh, sorry. That's the Susana thirty one is the keyword and. Um, 2021 is working for me. Exactly, that's what you posted is the password. So the password would be S capital, small u, S capital, uh, small a, small n, a capital 31. What are the occupational health safety instruments are you aware of for sanitation workers? Um, I see that um, we have the Garima scheme um, from Orissa that uh, people have responded. Um, let me go to the next question. Uh, and how effective are occupational health safety measures to safeguard sanitation workers' health and safety? How effective are OHS measures to safeguard sanitation workers' health and safety? Uh, I see some answers coming in. They would be displayed um, as soon as before we move on to the next question. So we can see that most of you have responded that it's somewhat effective um, and uh, but very few people have responded neutral. Um, so I think there needs to be more work in this area and the current measures that are done um, clearly um, most participants feel that it's um, only somewhat effective or they're not really ineffective or uh, you're not aware of uh, what is going on. Um, and then over to the last question. So uh, which instrument do you think uh, has made a considerable impact on sanitation workers' health and safety? Are there um, any, any instruments or any tools that you think have um, actually created an impact? So the questions would be dis uh, the answers would be displayed in a in a bit. You could just respond in one word. So I see the word soap, definitely.
and then we have safety equipment like gloves, boots. Um, I think uh, sa safety equipment um, clearly is the answer here. Masks. And uh, we have operational training as one of the responses. And uh, some sort of feedback mechanism from sanitation workers um, probably has a considerable impact. So thank you all for taking part in this uh, short uh, real time polling. Um, I think it is definitely um, necessary to revisit this topic and um, revisit all instruments to see how effective they are in creating an impact. Um, Finn, could you kindly share the last few slides? Uh, so with this, I invite Kelly James from COST to talk about a webinar series on sanitation, on manual emptying. Great, thank you so much. Um, I know we're over time, so I'll keep this very brief, but I would just like to invite everybody who's here to join us to continue this conversation, um, specifically with and about manual pit emptiers. So, PASA, COST, and Sanergy are going to be hosting a five-part webinar series in October and November, where we're going to have the opportunity to hear directly from and discuss directly with manual pit emptiers. Um, and we're going to be looking at what are their biggest challenges and where are their opportunities for us to collaborate and support them more effectively as a sector. Um, so I think this is a really exciting space where we're going to have the chance to discuss directly with manual pit emptiers. They're going to be leading the sessions um, and our discussions. And so in each session, we're going to tackle a new theme or challenge that was highlighted by emptiers um, as being of particular importance to their work. We're going to feature some presentations of exciting initiatives that are already happening to support manual emptiers across Africa. And then we're going to have space in each session for collaboration and discussion to start thinking about ways forward to support manual emptiers more effectively. So I'm going to put the. Um, sorry, Kelly, you're on mute. Oh, sorry, thank you. I'm not sure how long have I been muted for? Have I? Just a few seconds. OK, perfect, thank you. So I'm going to um, add the registration link into the chat, and then I'm going to be circulating more information as the event approaches. Um, I know October seems really far away now, but if you're like me, time has been moving extremely quickly, so it's good to start holding space and thinking about it. Um, but I invite you to keep your eyes open for this. I think it's going to be a really great series of sessions, and we hope that you'll all be able to join us. And if you have any questions about the session, my email is um, on the slide, but I'll add it into the chat as well. And I'd love to, to hear from you. So hopefully I'll see you there. Thanks. Thanks, Kelly. We're looking forward to the webinar series. Um, next, just to conclude the session, I would like to talk about the sanitation workers platform again, which Kanika had mentioned. So Susana will be uh, soon uh, launching the sanitation workers platform in collaboration with the ILO, Watrade, SNV, World Bank, um, WHO and BORDA um, sometime in the end of this year, and this would be a dedicated space for gathering knowledge, opinion, any sort of uh, training material, evidence, publications. And we also invite you to the Susanna Forum to discuss on this topic. Um, and uh, we would be able to link this platform to all the existing Susanna tools like um, the event calendar that we have and uh, project database and even opinion articles. So we welcome you to contribute to it. If you have any questions, you could uh, uh, write to us at info at susanna.org. I'll put the uh, email on chat. Um, and we hope that you would 
uh, be able to contribute to this platform and uh, extending the knowledge that we have uh, on sanitation workers topic. Uh, once again, I thank all of you for attending this session and uh, making it a huge success. Um, we will continue to collaborate on the Susana platform um, in the sanitation worker space where uh, we hope that you would uh, share all your knowledge and continue this discussion on sanitation workers further. Thank you all. Thank you to the presenters um, and all organizations who are part of organizing this session successfully. So we'll see you in the next few sessions. Um, the next session today would be on uh, practice for papers by the working group one capacity development in Susana at 14 um, hour CEST Central European Summertime. Thank you all.